Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the X-Plane 11 Tolis Airbus A321 and today we are going to look at the FMGC setup for an arrival on our flight into Manchester. Uh, it links in from the departure I did, I've shown uh, an FMG setup, FMGC setup for the flight down to Manchester and now we're going to look at it as if we were in flight and what we would need to do for our arrival uh, into our landing at Manchester. As you can see we are up in the cruise now, 23,000 feet, quite a low cruise level for this flight, not a long flight at all. Passengers are wandering around outside or in the cabin and uh, other than that all set up for the cruise. So what we're going to do is uh, get straight into it and start setting up our FMGC for our landing. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check the weather where you're going. You need to know which runway is in use uh, as well as the performance so you know whether you can land and to do the performance we need the weather. Once we've got that we can start coding the box. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat slightly and be quite uh, quick with it. I'm going to, using the AVI tab, load up the latest weather which here tells me that in Manchester it's 0708 knots, slightly varying wind, good visibility, no cloud, temperature 17, QNH1026. So nice high pressure day, that's nice weather. With that wind 070, uh, it means it's coming from the northeast. So if I look at the Manchester uh, uh, arrival plate, I can see that runway 05 is quite likely with the headwind, uh, and I would expect 05 left. That's just because I know the um, Manchester arrival quite well. I have flown there in real life, I, I do fly the Airbus in real life as well. So depending on the time of day they could land 05 left or 05 right. So for the sake of today we'll just pretend that they told us 05 left. To find out obviously in your simulator at home you'll either use VATSIM or you use the air traffic system or you can get the ATIS. Uh, the ATIS frequency is up here 12818 and when you're within range of the airfield you'll be able to listen in and get the runway in use. If you want to tune in the ATIS it'll just be uh, on the radio panel down here. 12818 but I suspect we're a bit far away in real life I wouldn't normally imagine you'd be able to get it this far out no it doesn't work just yet so we'd imagine we have uh, expecting the RS05 left great so this is going to mean we need to put in an arrival so we'll go first of all to the flight plan page and to set up for the arrival in the FMGC, we normally go in a little hatch. So we go from flight plan, radio nav fade, progress, performance, fuel prediction, secondary flight plan. So this little hat, it looks like, I'll draw it out for you like that. Starting with the flight plan, we need to select our arrival. So as we did in the setup before, although I've cleared it out here to make it blank and start from scratch, we're going to select the airport we're arriving at, Manchester. Then I'm going to select the arrival on the top right, arrival. I think it's the ILS05 left and we were flight planned, if I go to our flight plan, on the Rosin 2 Alpha. It was planned for 23 left but I know the Rosin 2 Alpha works also for 0 5. So scroll through with this little down arrow to make it scroll in the direction. It's, it's an up arrow on here but it makes this scroll down. It's slightly counterintuitive until you get used to it. So press the up arrow and we scroll down through the list and you can see if I press it again, Rosin 2 Alpha will go to the top of the list. Doesn't matter where it is, once you can see it, you just press the line select key next to it. So I'm going to select Rosin 2 Alpha. And then here you would select your transition or via. Uh, I don't think we're going to need that for this arrival. I'm expecting vectors from Rosin. Uh, this, so this depends entirely on where you are. So if I look at my chart for the Rosin 2 Alpha, it brings us in from Lakey speed limit point to Rosin and then we'll hold there until air traffic tell us otherwise uh, and they would vector us around for the RS so expect that way for 05. If you want to see what you're entering, uh, so I think that's reasonable so I'm going to go back to the flight plan page with return and then I'm going to press insert, insert again and there we are it's now loaded in. I can now see what I've done so if you're not sure if it looks right to you you can move the on the EFIS control panel up here we can using the mouse wheel select plan so it's set to arc if I move it right one to plan we get this mode change and now I adjust the scale to whatever I think is useful so 40 miles is reasonable and if I select constraint I'll see the altitude and speed constraints on here now on my flight plan page 
to press like that. That's our current two way point, Bebney. I can see it's in front of us on here. And if we again press that little up arrow, which takes us further down the list, you'll see uh, DCS point go up one and Lake come up one. And the, the navigation display will show us each of these points as we go through. So I can scroll through and I see we get to Rosin and then downwind. And if I zoom in, I'll see what's going on there. It looks like it's taking us through the overhead and then back round in from the south onto the RLS 05 left. Again, there's all sorts of different arrivals. If I was to put in a, a via, so RLS 05 left, Rosin 2 Alpha again, Rosin 2 Alpha, uh, and then we could have a via uh, Rosin. I'll insert that and insert again. And now it's slightly different routing, so this way you can check it on the ND. That's got us coming in overhead the Machado Tango out, and then that looks like a procedural turn, so that's flying the procedure. Unrealistic in real life, uh, but certainly a possible way of doing it. And if we look on our RS05 left chart, that is what that looks like. So Machado Tango outbound, procedural turn, and back in down the RS. So there's all different ways. So if you look through that, if you don't do a via, it's one of the simplest ones. So I'll leave it in like that for now, that's fine, that's our coding. And I'll put this back to arc, which is what we'd normally not use flying along, increase the range of it so I can see our top of descent point coming. So that's the flight plan page. We can now find out a few bits of information. Our landing time is 15.21, so it's 14.52, so about half an hour from now. About 149 miles left to run, 4.6 tonnes of fuel expected when we get there. In real life we would also carefully check this arrival, so I can see on here a speed limit of 230 knots at Rosin, um, and a speed limit point here just before. So you can also, if you go to the plan page, and with the constraint button pressed, you'll see these, just zoom in, you'll see these constraints appear. If you ever want to get back to the current waypoint that you're flying towards, just press flight plan again and it'll take you to this page. Next waypoint is Dean Cross, Delta Charlie Sierra. So I'll scroll down again, and there we go, 250 knots at the speed limit point, Rosin 230 knots. So that's all checked, and you check that with the other pilot. This looks to me like it might be the wrong chart, actually, the Cat 2 3 chart, so I'll just close that, go back to Manchester, and let's bring up the approach chart. Ah, that's DME, or Local DME 05 left, that's what we're expecting to do. Here we go, that's better. Great, and there's our procedural turn that, that we know is coded in. So, looking back at the MCDU, that's the flight plan section done. Radio nav aid. So now we can tune what we want. The Aeropass will auto-tune. If it's written in small text, small blue numbers like this, it's auto-tuned. If I type it in, like Charlie Tango, I can just type that in there, and it will go into big blue text, which means I've entered it. So that will stay there until I clear it out again and let the Airbus auto-tune, which is this small blue text. This is the wrong code in here. It should be 109.5. It's currently the wrong one. It's using that from the departure at Edinburgh. Um, it's quite a short flight. Normally I'd expect that to change fairly soon, but we'll check in the descent that this does change over to the correct RLS frequency. We can also keep scrolling through our flight plan. And if I go to this page, so I've got Charlie India. I'll put that back to plan. If I keep scrolling, we'll see the outbound round and back in. So here we go. So Charlie India 05 left. Track 052, 052, so it's the correct track inbound. And it's got our speed limit starting at 3,300 feet. Platform's 3,000 feet, so expect it to be slightly um, lower there. Then we'll fly our RLS to the threshold, so that is runway 05 left at Manchester. I can also see the go around, missed approach, climb straight ahead to 3,500 feet, then as directed. So if we scroll through. It's got 660 feet, I'm not sure why, but then a uh, manual straight ahead, which is drawn on there, heading 053, which is what we expect to do, and we'll manually set 3,500 feet. Great, so we've done the flight plan, the RADNAV progress page now. So top tip here, to make sure you're on the correct profile, I'm gonna, which means vertical profile, so we know if we're high or low in our descent into Manchester. A useful thing to do is write in the runway you're landing on. So I'm gonna land at Manchester, Echo, Golf, oh, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, and now I can type in the runway I'm landing on. So I'm landing on 05 left. So that goes in there, 
and type that in there. Great. I'm 92 miles away from the threshold. For this, we use three degrees. It's quite common. A lot of pilots use that. Uh, so from 23,000 feet, if I times that by three, that's 69 miles as a minimum to get our descent in. And then I need another 10 miles to slow down. If you're heavy, if you're fast, if there's a tailwind, you'll need to increase those distances. Uh, so we're in a good place. We've got a little bit of space there. And also, although we have uh, 90 miles to the runway, we're probably going to fly a bit further because we're going to fly that procedure I showed you where we fly down the length of the approach and back round again. So we've done flight plan, done rad nav, done progress, that's set up. Once we're descending, we'll see our profile up here. You have to tell us if we're high or low compared to what the Airbus has calculated. Also very useful to make sure you've got the winds loaded in. So on the init page, wind, you can select wind request uh, and that way it will know or have some idea for the descent and it will take that into account when calculating. Good. So that's the progress page. Another useful thing, you can check that you're still using GPS primary for your approach. We're using an ILS today, so we don't need the GPS to be working, but it's good to see it there. And accuracy is quite important, high. So this means that our Airbus is saying that it's estimating an accuracy of 0.05 nautical miles, and we only require one nautical mile. So we are more accurate than we need to be for flying this arrival, which is great. We'll check that again in the descent. Next one is performance, so moving along our hat, flight plan, radio, nav aid, progress, performance. So here we'd need to now go and calculate our performance for landing in Manchester. Depending on how you want to do that, we don't have that facility as far as I'm aware in this uh, model of the Airbus. Um, so what I'm going to do today is say that I'm going to use low auto brake because I know it's a long runway with a light headwind. If I go here. Uh, here I can see that 05 left is a 8,000 foot runway. Flat full landing, low auto brake, and we are at a weight of slightly heavy at the moment, 77 tons, uh, but that's going to reduce by the time we land with the fuel burnt. Uh, back on our performance page then. We're in the cruise phase now. So now we're going to skip through, press next phase. There's the descent phase, so it's going to descend at 320 knots, Mach decimal 82. So to start the descent at decimal 82, and then when it transitions automatically to 320 knots, it will then stay at 320 knots. I think that's quite fast. I'm going to change the cost of next actually to zero, which will mean it flies slightly slower, more economical. And you can see that number reducing now. And the real airplane, it tends to just reduce, it recalculates straight away for you. But that 320 knots is pretty fast. We don't want to be more than that because you'll be very near to the red overspeed pole which you descend. Any turbulence could put you into it. Next phase then. So here's the approach phase. So going back to our chart of Manchester airports. Here's the weather. So we're going to type this in. So I start at the top left uh, and work round. So QNH is 1026. We know it's a high QNH, that's good. Temperature is 17 degrees. 17, just type it in there. The wind 0708. So you put in 070 slash 8 and that can go in there. Transition level 60, so air traffic control will tell you this on their ATIS, it could be higher if there's a low QNH, but 60 seems reasonable today. So flight level 60 is our last flight level. Uh, below that will be altitudes. I know in America uh, it's much higher. I think it's at uh, 18,000 feet. Now uh, put in the MDA. So we're just flying a normal category one ILS to 05 left. With ILS minima 412. Just type in there. Config full landing is here. It's possible to change it. If you press that to config three, but we're landing coming full, so we just select that and you see our approach speeds change accordingly. And that's the approach phase done. Next page, engine out acceleration. I'm going to put that at 3,500 feet in case we have an engine failure in the go around to stop it climbing. No, it doesn't seem to work. In the real airplane, I would expect to be able to type that in, so I'm not sure why. Anyway, and the thrust reduction acceleration for the go around are 1750 feet, which is uh, reasonable. I'll do another video on that. Fuel prediction. Similar to what I showed you on the flight plan page, so we moved along a hat flight plan, red new navade progress per fuel prediction. Final reserve fuel of 1.4 tons, sensible for a 321 at this weight. So we have an extra time of 1.7 tons when we arrive at Manchester. It thinks we're going to arrive at Manchester at 15.21 with 4.6 tons of fuel. We've currently got, if we look on here, uh, sorry up here, we've got 4.9, so about 300 kilos. 
I think we'll burn a little bit more than that. So it's not always perfect, but it gives you an idea. I think we'll land with uh, maybe 4.4, 4.5. Great. That's it really for that, just for our calculations. So we know we have enough fuel to hold. We need to land with 1.4 tonnes um, plus our alternate fuel, depending on how you calculated that. But even so, probably that would be around 2.2 tonnes, something like that today. Your flight plan will have it calculated. Um, so we're going to have plenty of fuel to hang around if we need to. Finally, secondary flight plan. I'm just going to copy the active. What you could do is you could put in here if I go to secondary flight plan, you could put in the other runway. So maybe we're not sure which runway we're landing on. So in this one, I could simply do exactly as we did in the normal flight plan, and I could put in RS05 right with the rosin arrival by rosin and insert. It doesn't need to be actioned, as it were. It just as soon as you insert it, it does it straight away. And you can see here, it's now got the 05 right arrival. You can also then do the performance, but because I copied it over, the secondary performance, and we can see it's secondary performance because the secondary here is all loaded in. You'd put in a new minima as well for, for the secondary runway, but I'm not going to worry about that today because I'm expecting 05 left. And that's it. That's our little hat. So that's the MCDU loaded up. We have something useful for us. We've got the performance in. The aeroplane uses this performance page to calculate all sorts of things. Uh, the approach speed, depending on your flat the temperature, it uses the Q&H to determine the descent profile of the pressurization in the cabin, so that's why you need all these bits entered in. If you don't have them entered in time, you get that message at the bottom saying enter desk data. So here we go, if we look on the navigation display I can see this little down arrow, that means our top of descent is coming. We'd have done our brief as a crew, we'd have worked out uh, the MSA, which means the uh, safe altitude that we are need to fly to be clear of the terrain beneath us. Uh, and so on. But that's it. Hopefully that's useful for you. That's just a setup of the MCDU uh, and what needs to be done. In fact, there's that message, enter desk data, which we've now done. And uh, yeah, let me know if that was uh, useful for you. I'll be doing some more videos on the Airbus and the uh, FMGC, so let me know if there's anything uh, in particular you'd like to see covered. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.